everybody. Welcome back to Treatment Tuesday. Today I'm going to talk about another treatment that I have undergone during my long chronic illness and that is oxygen therapy. So basically for people that have Lyme disease we have um, trouble getting oxygen into all of our tissues, into our brain. Um, basically getting oxygen, enough oxygen throughout our bodies. So this is something known as um, cellular hypoxia. So basically it's, um, like I said, not getting enough oxygen into your cells because of, you know, mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, that kind of thing. So we need to supplement with oxygen. You guys haven't seen it on here because when I do my vlogs, I do not um, leave my cannula on, but I do have an oxygen cannula. I have an oxygen a stationary oxygen concentrator downstairs and I wear the oxygen in my nose and the cannula for 8 to 12 hours every day. I try to get to 8 hours um, as much as possible. Um, 12 hours is a bit much but depending on how I feel I will try to do as many hours as possible. Um, so f uh, for, for some people with Lyme disease this I believe this is prescribed, like I said, it's for cellular hypoxia, but you know, what happens when you have cellular hypoxia? Well, you get joint pain, you get fatigue, you get brain fog, you get all of these symptoms that are classic Lyme disease symptoms. For me, I personally do not get joint pain or severe fatigue. I do feel a, a bit more foggy and out of it without my oxygen, but I can't say that I am extremely fatigued. Um, so for me, the biggest benefit of the oxygen is, um, I want to say, my light sensitivity. And again, this is not a cure. This is a treatment or it is part of an overall treatment plan. So it is. it does not take away my light sensitivity. It does not eliminate it completely. It relieves it a little bit, um, but doesn't make it go away. It doesn't relieve it to the point where I can, you know, resume doing, you know, all the normal things I used to do before I got sick. It just helps to bring it down a little bit. And also for me, it helps with the fogginess. So due to my illness, I do have, um, like I said, the light sensitivity. I have pressure in my but all of that is caused by poor blood circulation to the brain. So obviously if your brain is, if your blood is not circulating to your brain, um, you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain because of course your red blood cells carry oxygen and if you're not getting enough blood to your brain, you're not getting enough oxygen. So that's what leads to the brain fog and increased sensitivity to light. Um, so for me that is, that is the primary benefit um, of course, it does give me a little bit of a boost in energy, um, and it it just keeps me feeling um, a little bit better than I would without it. Um, now, again, it's not a cure; it's just part of an overall treatment plan. Um, it's very safe and easy to use. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I try to use it the full eight hours. It is hard to get through all of those eight hours because. Like I said, when I vlog, I don't like having it on. Um, when I'm doing things around the house, I sometimes it's hard to keep it on and to be walking around with it. But I do try to maintain at least, at least you know, as close to eight hours as I can possibly get. Um, sometimes I give myself a break on the weekends just because I don't like being tied down to it so much. Um, I do about two liters per minute through the nasal cannula, so that's the rate um, that I use. If you know, you can put it a little bit higher or lower depending on how you feel, but it's best to stick with the prescription that your doctor gives you because it is considered a drug. So oxygen is considered a drug, and you know you kind of want to stick to the prescription that your doctor gives you. Um, the other added benefit for people with Lyme disease. Um, for using oxygen therapy and also this is sort of the medical basis behind um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy as well is that it keeps your infections in check. So basically Lyme disease and other 
basically any infection or any virus that you have in your body, um, they thrive in an oxygen poor environment. So the less oxygen you have in your body, the, the more these infections will thrive. Um, so the, the other benefit is that having this constant stream of oxygen coming into your body and oxygenating your blood and all of your body and your tissues keeps these bacteria, fungus, viruses from growing and becoming a problem again. Um, I, I'm not really sure that, I mean, it's obviously it's based on science, bacteria and all of that. They grow in, you know, places that don't have a lot of oxygen, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't really know if that is exactly my issue, that I have this ongoing bacterial infection, um, but I still use the oxygen just as a precaution because you never, you never really know. Um, and also if you have candida overgrowth, um, in your digestive tract, this can also help to keep that overgrowth somewhat under control. Again, it's not going to eliminate the problem, but it's going to help um, maintain you at a certain level of, um, of function in your day-to-day -day life. So that's basically all that is. I don't really have much to say about oxygen therapy, except that it does help um, and it, it is a good part of an overall treatment plan, but it also cannot be used alone. And I know that there are some um, there are some precautions to using oxygen therapy for people that have Lyme disease or chronic infections because it can, it can cause die off um, if you just start using it right away and you're very infected. So I think some doctors may recommend to hold off on using the oxygen until you started. Um, you know, antibacterial therapy. But again, I'm not a doctor. If you're interested in oxygen therapy for your Lyme disease or any other chronic illness, you have to talk to your doctor and see what they tell you about that because it is a case-by-case -case basis. Not everybody is the same. Not everyone is going to respond to it the same. And you really have to, you have to have your doctor, you know, run tests to see if you are a good candidate for it before you actually start it. Because I have seen on the internet people saying, oh, you know, uh, go find an oxygen bar. Oxygen bars were really cool back, you know, several years ago. And now we're learning that it could be potentially dangerous to have such high levels of pure oxygen going into your system. So that's something to consider. You know, you if you're a sick person, you need to talk to your doctor first before you try any type of therapy. Um, or any type of treatment protocol. Um, so that's my treatment Tuesday for today. Um, and I'll be back uh, every Tuesday with a new treatment and then my Thursday thoughts. Also take a look at my playlist. I will be adding to them uh, weekly. Uh, that way you get the whole picture of my chronic illness as opposed to just these little bits and pieces um, You know, every, every couple days. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys again very soon.